All right, now we're going to look at graph editor and see how what we could do about uh, the falling of this ball. Okay, in this case, I could see the entire curve, unlike the pre-infinity, post-infinity cycle. So what am I going to do here to make it so uh, the curve goes up, then almost straight down? Because now, when I go to adjust the curve, let's say I go like this, it goes like this. We don't want that to happen. We want it to go the opposite way. Well, we can break tangents, it's called. So we can break the tangents on, let's say, all the bottom of the curve. So anytime a curve dips down, that's when a tangent's going to get broken. And that one is this one right here, break tangents. So in this case, then this side of the curve, I want to make it go like this. But just as equal to that, I want to be able to go like that. Okay, so now bounce. But I don't want it so technically high that it's higher than, like, let's say the apex of the curve right here is higher than the one right here. So I want to tone that down. Again, chaos. Think about chaos. So, uh, now you could do all these at the same time, but again, The odds of that ball bouncing so perfectly down the stairs every every time the curve hits. Um, again, I like that chaos method. I always preach chaos because you know I like the physics part of this stuff. Okay, so let's see what it looks like like now, just by hitting play. Okay, a lot of energy right here, I'm seeing. Um, from right here to here, you can see it almost dips a little bit too much. So let's look at that first. Just going to tweak it just a little bit. It feels too mechanical right in this region. There we go. That's a lot better. So I just tweaked the curve so I feel more like a toss at that point. So we're going to add 144 frames to this. And at that point, the ball is now on the ground, right? And let's say it has rolled forward in some manner. So I'm going to put it over here. Shift W. Just kind of look at that. A lot of energy there. Do you see it at the very end? Where how did it get all the way over here? Okay, so I'm just actually going to move that back to about right here and hit Shift W, and then look at the animation again.
So I'm always adjusting. That's why animation is kind of boring to watch as far as like video training is concerned because really you don't know what's going through my brain and sometimes I can't even explain that myself. So. I know one thing that's going through my brain. I, I'm always going like this. Ten, 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 ten. Ten, 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 ten. And you'll get that going in your head with the animation too. Um, it's kind of like a, a natural four second per, four beats per second tick that goes on. Okay, let's look at the X. Now with energy, it's spent. You know, it's like, you know, would it, would this curve be any oscillation whatsoever? The answer would be no, it would not. Unless there was some kind of force being applied to it. So in this case, I usually go flat tangents or I mean like, sorry, just this one right here, linear tangents. If I use this one, um, it would give this natural little step on things, but yeah, I'm definitely going to use linear tangents. And sometimes I hand adjust this one just a little bit. All right, so let's see what that did. It, you're not going to see too much of a difference there. And I'm just adjusting this just a little bit. This one right here needs a little less. And when it hits the edge there, I think it would travel a little bit more into the step. So I adjust that one. And for this one, I don't think it would go up in the air that far. But at that point, I had not dictated how far. I got the step. Oh, I got this one right here. That feels better. What it's missing now is the rotate. So if we were to look at this without the wireframe, what's it look like? It feels like it has a lot of, right here, drag time. Okay, so we could shorten the animation up. What, what it feels like, it, it's taking too long to go down the stairs, right? Too long to go down. Remember, snap's on, so I can grab all these, and then hold shift, and scale them. Then I kind of zoom in and put it back to one. Just like that. Okay, let's hit play, see what happens. Better. Again, turn off wireframe so you can kind of get a sense of how things are going and then make adjustments to your curve as needed. And trust me when I say this, that you know one thing about an animation class is my, my objection or taste to things is going to be a little bit different than yours. So 
you know, I'll, I'll tweak this to the day is long, but what's important to know is like my keyframes being set so perfect on these students will follow that to the bloody day um, to make sure that your my keyframes match their keyframes. But you got to get over that habit of monkey see, monkey do in my class. I freaking hate that. Um, it's it's going to be different. Just face facts that my keyframes are going to land differently than your keyframes, and my time's going to be a little bit different than your time. But the effective thing in the end has to be a ball falling down the stairs. Uh, just don't jump off the lemming wagon just yet. It's okay. Oh, that looks a lot better. See, just by adjusting a few things, it's getting better. So getting better means we go to the next step and think about rotation. 